So you'll see, I'm almost finished. I have just left the critical step off this one and then I will show you the other way of proving it, which you might have noticed is substantially faster, but that's okay. So you can see, I've just done my straight substitution. I've expanded out using my tree identities. Everything is fine. Okay. I get to this point. Why is this point an important point to pause? I'm about to evaluate some limits. That's a critical step, right? So you've got this guy, you know what happens to this. This is identical to what you had over here, right? So we know even though they're both going towards zero, when you compare the numerator and the denominator, the numerator gets to zero faster, much, much faster. So that's why the whole thing ends up being zero. So you're gonna get cos x times zero, take away sine x times one. Okay, so you can see, all right, you differentiate sine, you get cosine. You differentiate cosine, you don't get back to sine, you get back to negative sine. And of course, it must be that way. Because when you have a look at this, you think about what cosine looks like, right? Missed. Okay. When you think about the gradient, have a look at the first pi radians of the graph. The first pi radians. Within that domain, is cosine an increasing or decreasing function? And it's clearly decreasing. So therefore, its gradient function has to be underneath here. It can't be up here. That doesn't make sense, right? So when students, because they frequently do, confuse between like which one gets the minus sign, like which one is it this one to that, or is it that one sign differentiate sign gets a negative cos? Think about what it looks like. You'll be fine if you think of a picture. It has to be this, right? Because it's decreasing and then it's increasing. That's the way I visualize that. So I did say, if you did it the other way, it was substantially faster. Because if, if you differentiate cos by considering as a compound angle. Right? So if you differentiate rather than cos, you differentiate this. Okay? This is just chain rule, right? It's just chain rule. So when you do the inside function, what's the derivative of the inside? It's just negative one. And then you do the outside, but we just decided that sine turns into cosine, right? So it just becomes this. There's that inside function still there. But, but wait a second, we just showed. I know what that is. That's sine. And you are there in some pretty decent time, okay? Now, one last result. We got sine from first principles. We did cosine either the long way or you went to chain rule. 10, of course. Now 10 falls out pretty quickly when you remember that tan, of course, is just defined as sine over cos. So this is actually going to appeal to quotient rule. Now that sounds terrible. We hate quotient rule. We avoid it everywhere we possibly can. But watch what happens, right? Because you know what each of the individual derivatives is. V, u dash. There's V. What's u dash? It's just cosine. So I'm going to get cos squared. Agreed? Take away uv dash, that's sine x. We just showed that's minus sine x, so there's minus sine squared x, do you agree with that? All over v squared, which is cos squared, yeah? But you can see what's happening on the numerator, right? Cos squared plus sine squared, this is the familiar Pythagorean identity. So this is one, and by convention, we write this as sec squared, okay? So, put a big box around. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of tan is sec squared. And then of course you can combine these with all of the product rule, quotient rule, chain rule questions you already know. For instance, I could ask you, what's the derivative of, let's just do a simple one to begin with, sine 2x. This is a chain rule, right? What are you gonna do to it? You're going to do the inside, which is two. And then you're going to do the outside, which is cos. Done. That was not hard. How about, how about we do something like this? Can you differentiate for me cos squared? How would you rewrite that? Cos this is cos x all squared, right? So this is, again, chain rule, but in a different direction. So I'm going to do the inside, which is minus sine. 
And then I'm going to do the outside, which is bring the power down and reduce the power by 1. Which looks to me like minus 2 sine x cos x. That sounds like this, doesn't it? And not that that was necessarily essential, but okay. So I can keep on doing this. I could do, here's an interesting one. How about this one? Logs. F dash on F, right? F dash on F. What's F dash? Minus sine. What's F? It's that. So that's this. And I could do this for a long time, right? You see, now that you know more different kinds of functions, you can fit them together in more different ways. It's just like getting more Lego, and the number of things you can have, pun not intended, increases exponentially, right? So this is actually... This is the second last major category of functions that we will ever learn how to differentiate or, as we go on to in a couple of days, integrate. The last category is inverse trig. It's like, oh, well, trig, inverse trig, shouldn't be that different, right? We will get all of those results out of these, but they end up being quite different beasts, as you'll see when we get there.